It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's superhero slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris. And my name is Mike. And this week, we're covering the CCXP, which, for those who don't know, this is like a Comic-Con in Brazil uh, that brings a lot of media stuff out there. So we're going to be talking about the trailers for Fallout, Godzilla x Kong. Furiosa, The Boys Season 4, Halo, Game of Thrones, and whatever else has come out of this this week, Mike. This is just a hell of a weekend. Yep, it is uh, it is a trailer park like no other here on the podcast. Uh, CCXP is always really fun for us. It always takes us off guard. Like, you sent mm-hmm. me a text like, oh, shit, it's like this weekend. Yeah. And then there, <laughs> and then, uh, there goes any AI detection software that uh, picks up on swearing, you know, right at the beginning yeah. of the podcast. Oh, that's right. There fine. we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's cool. And, and I can't remember if it always happens at the end of the year or not, but the reason it could be really popular, at least this time around, it's just like, we got to get our media spends done. Our budgets are wrapping up at the end of the year. Fly all these people yeah. to Brazil, so we'll get the same amount of money next year on our budget and that and everything that was essentially delayed uh from the strikes that was pushed into spring uh summer of 2024 is essentially uh now's the time for that marketing promotions to kick off so yes. a lot of the stuff we talked about um something i've seen i've i've seen the most of and i, I will i will say probably because of the monarch show on apple tv but it's a godzilla x kong is just flooding all of my feeds right now like uh, mm-hmm. that and godzilla minus one the movie in tokyo is actually bringing in lots of money in America now with the dub version. So yeah, uh, like Godzilla God, has never been bigger right now. Yeah. What a search term out there online. SEO folks, get your, get your Godzilla tags and, in while they're hot. And, spicy. And, M- and Eminem was in Fortnite and he's got that Godzilla song or something <laughs> that he, that he raps to. So I mean, the, the only thing I know about Fortnite is Peter Griffin was added to it oh and they had gosh. to make him buff. Which yeah. it's funny, like I get it, like I, I have no, I have absolutely no opinion about it at all. But I did see somebody say, and I don't know if this is true, but they had to make him buff because his hitbox would be too big. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. And if that's the case, that is hilarious to me. Yeah. That like they just don't have room for characters with too much volume, or they'll just yeah. die all the time. A lo- there, a lot of the characters have to fit that certain frame, or else you know they're easier to hit. And no one will play with them, or they're too. Too small and people will use them and, and kind it's of like, cheat. It's so. like the it's like the opposite of odd job. Well, all I mean, over again from Goldeneye. Well, while well, we're talking about Fortnite, Fortnite had an event this week and they launched. Uh, they kicked off actually the new season of Fortnite, uh, the new chapter, which includes Peter Griffin and Solid Snake from uh, Metal Gear Solid. Mike. Ooh, uh, does he have his box? He does have his box. He has yes. a hide in the box emote. Uh, but one of the uh, fun things is they actually launched three extra Fortnite games. Um, one is called Fortnite uh, Festival, made with harmonics, the people who made rock bands. So they're actually oh. bringing in music, and you actually can play, like, your character will play the instruments in the game using the controller, kind of like a rock band, like a, a smaller oh. version of rock band, which okay. I think is cool. Um, Lego and Fortnite launched. So there's actually have an entire Lego mode in Fortnite where you can build, and it's like a building survival game in Fortnite mm. uh, world. Right. So. I'm like that's pretty okay, and then the other one is um it's not rocket racing. I think it's it's something that, or no it's not it is it's called rocket racing, which Epic owns Rocket League, so they've made it so you can actually have racing tracks in Fortnite using the Rocket League cars and like the mechanics. Oh, so, look at that synergy! Look yeah. at that synergy machine pumping. They, uh, I mean, it's always been fun because everyone talks about well, Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse sucks, but Fortnite's metaverse. I'm like, actually, I kind of want to play these games. Like, this is mm-hmm. this metaverse where everything is crossing over into each other. I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of understand this a little bit more than um, you know, Mark Zuckerberg's. We're all avatars of ourselves in in VR. So uh, it's fine. But anyway, I, I've been spending some time on that. I, but Eminem was the event yesterday, and he has that. Uh, was it God, is a song called Godzilla, right? I think so. So, um, I don't know. I mean, usually at the top of the show, you know, we would talk about like what we've been playing or what we've been watching. Uh, but I finally wrapped up and finished uh, playing Spider Man Two or Sony PS Five Spider Man Two. Yes. Chris, you know, Thank if you. I had to be very specific, like how you would want. So, uh, Chris beat it like a couple weeks ago. So we're yeah. gonna talk about it in length filled with spoilers at the yeah. end of the show. 
So just a heads up, yeah. if you want to hear our thoughts, of full, well, unadulterated thoughts about Spider-Man 2. And, and It'll then be at the end. And then in Mike's uh, time it took to beat one game, I beat another full game, and that was Mortal Kombat <laughs> 11. I beat all of Mortal Kombat 11 yesterday. Um, nice. Which I like Mortal Kombat. I love it, and it's very bite-sized. You play as a character. They have, they have a story mode, Mike. I think you've played 11, right, recently? Or, or maybe... No, not okay. Me. So that you, you essentially play as a character for four rounds while you have like a, you know CG cutscenes in between them all. Like it carries a story along. And it was really fun. The only part I hate, there's a character called Nitara. She's a vampire character, like from the older like Mortal Kombat trilogy era of, of Mortal Kombat, where they just started throwing characters left and right at the game. Uh, and mm-hmm. then this one's her likeness and voice actress is Megan Fox. And uh, boy, does she suck at voice acting. Like, like it literally is like, you know, you know, you think voice acting can't be hard and just talking to a microphone. Well, it is. And hearing her talk as her character is like whiplash in a video game. Like, like you're just ripped out of the moment. I'm like, yeah, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm Googling it. Uh, yeah. All right. Not the voice, but like lots of images of her right next to her her yeah. character almost kind of looks like her. A That's what I said. Bit. Yeah, I wonder... they, they did the likeness of her. Yeah, okay. of that too. Yeah. And then like Megan Fox has been doing the Diablo Four thing, but I'm like, oh my god, like the whiplash of this character, like her voice acting is atrocious. Uh, so I'm like, um, I, I it just it just took me out of it. But other than that, game was superb. Do not pay full price for Mortal Kombat games unless you're like a professional, because boy, once you beat it, what do you do with this game? Uh, they they have an invasion mode, which is like a kind of a board game thing where you move around and like do different fights with different like scenarios, and it's a multiversal mode called Invasions, which, um, which is funny because they did uh, NetherRealm did the DC Injustice games, right, and Injustice Two, which they had a, a multiversal ga- uh, game mode afterwards, which was really fun. But uh, overall, I, I mean, I had had a really good time with it. I'm glad glad I got to play it. Um, hopefully to play some more. They have an Omni Man Mike in there right now from from Invincible. You can play as him. Oh yeah, I remember that. And then Peacemaker and Homelander coming up as well, which we'll talk about at least Homelander uh, in in the show today. So um, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Really nothing good. I, I'm I'm really sad at myself. I'm two episodes behind on Monarch simply because I'm like I have to sit down for like an hour to watch this. I want to focus on it, and I just I just can't find the time to do it because of the holiday season. But uh, thankfully, we found out a couple weeks ago. There's ten ten whole weeks of this stuff. So there's no rush to get it done. Mike, anything else you want to add before we jump into the news today? No, I think we should jump into it because we got a lot of trailers to talk about. We got a lot of news, and then yep. I just really want to talk about Spider Man. I, I know you do. I, I this is I can feel it. I feel it. <laughs> first and foremost, uh, if you are here uh, for the first time uh, on, on your on your podcast uh, thing or YouTube, give us a like and a subscribe if you can, because that helps the show out grow as we uh, do more and more. So just that. But let's jump into CCXP. Uh, for people who don't know, we call it Brazil Comic Con. What it stands for is the Certified Customer Experience Professional uh, Event. And boy, that sucks. So CCXP that sounds, it is. <laughs> that sounds like, that just really sounds like an HR like re, like uh, resort yeah. or something. Yeah. So it's like C2E2, CCXP. It's based, it's Brazil, and they even say it's based on San Diego Comic Con, right? Uh, for that kind of stuff. So a bunch of movie studios went down there. I believe Paramount, Paramount uh, or... Maybe I think um, looking at Halo, Amazon Prime was big. Some other ones. So we'll we'll talk about that. But uh, first and foremost, I think one of the the most interesting trailers to me, Mike, uh, is the one for Furiosa, which is the prequel series to Mad Max Fury Road, mm-hmm. uh, and that came out um, uh, again, written and directed by. Oh, I can't think of the name. I just George had George Miller. George Miller. That's right. Uh, who is like eighty five plus years old at this point. Um, and this movie stars Anya Taylor Joy as a young Furiosa, and then Chris Hemsworth with a little bit of a uh, prosthetics on to make himself look a little more, uh, you know, post-apocalyptic, if you will. So I think yeah, it's in the I nose was, a little bit. I, I wasn't expecting him to be in this movie. I this had totally fallen off my radar. I feel like Furiosa was like this movie that was always perpetually like three or four years out. So mm-hmm. when a trailer dropped, I was pretty shocked. And yeah. I have to say, I'm very glad somewhat recently I went back and watched Fury Road because that movie is just a masterpiece, right? I know if you get too much into like the internet movie culture, right? Movies get overhyped and then sometimes you fall out of love with them because like it almost becomes too mainstream, like in your niche community, which is a very weird thing, but it happens all the time out there on the internet. So I'm glad I went back and rewatched it because it's just such a good movie. So like I tried to reconnect with the feeling of watching that movie when I was watching this trailer. 
trailer because this trailer is mm. like a full full octane if i had to put like a, a movie yeah. quote on the poster right and that's how mad max has always been right the the uh, mad max uh movies you know it's a post-apocalyptic world uh there's cars there's there's you know flames uh what was really interesting to me is you know there's the parallel shots between this and fury road right where she's in the car uh driving and it's got you know the um the nicholas holt uh, character from the the mm-hmm. fury road there's a lot of parallels um in this i'm, I'm interested to see again how she loses her arm because it looks like she has her metal arm for a lot mm-hmm. of this movie and um you know how she became a driver for um the bad guy, uh, who, who's actually briefly in this, though, with the white hair and the face mask, who they yeah, killed. what did they what did they call him? Something Joe, yeah, and Morton something. Joe, and Morton Joe, Morton, yeah, yeah, uh, which is cool. I will say, you know, knowing we we talk about the movie production world, knowing that Fury Road was one of the most gruesome films to be shot in like the the two thousands, right? Like where they're like for days, and they had the sand, and everything was just rough to make for everybody involved. Um, it, it shows right watching fury road you see and feel everything it's a very tangible movie right despite the fact it's mostly you know a lot of desert and a lot of, a lot of weird stuff mm-hmm. but this one feels a little rubbery like if i was to to liken anything i, I told this to to friend uh listener to the show patrick uh, is that th- the first fury road is essentially lord of the rings and this is the hobbit because i can feel the cgi in this trailer just a little bit more yeah. Like I'm like I I'm like I I feel the rubbers of like the vehicle wheels like they don't look right uh-huh. a little bit. Yeah, I saw some other conversations online that are kind of um, echoing what you're saying too because I had a very similar feeling too after I watched it. I was like, well, I love the energy. I love the you can really feel the George Miller like direction on it, right? Just the the interesting shots, the angles, just the pacing of the trailer in and of itself, right? But yeah, there are just things like physical objects like the, that the camera's capturing that's like this looks like is mm-hmm. there more special effects going on here yeah. what's happening so uh, i'm gonna give george miller the benefit of the doubt right because i don't yeah. i don't see how you make um fury road and win all of the awards get all of the critical acclaim and i think it was a box office success as well oh yeah you don't do that and then put more restrictions on George Miller to make another one right so I'm curious to see what exactly is going to end up on screen I don't th- yeah I don't, I don't I don't think it's going to be a bad movie I think it's just going to be a, a safer production if you will at the end of the day uh, mm-hmm. but like yeah we didn't really have to go out and do this this forever but you know this guy George Miller for, for those uh, who don't know he does he is all over the place um, because he did um, the original uh, Mad Max 2 and the Fury of Fury so he has done Babe and Babe Pig in the City he uh, directed Happy Feet uh, Lorenzo's Oil like this guy has done all over the place right and I, I I applaud him for sticking to that he was also up for a Justice League movie in the early 2000s if you remember that one uh, George Miller's the, the Justice League that was cancelled right mm-hmm. before it was filmed so I'm, I'm excited to watch this um, and, and check it out. So check out the trailer. Again, all these links are in our show notes. But, like, to me, I um, I trust the story. I trust the process. But I can just – I just hope the trailer is just like, yeah, this is just what we – we took what was cool rather than, hey, this is uh, what representative of, like, all, the whole movie looks like these these trucks that just don't look real. So uh, we'll, we'll check that out. Another trailer that dropped today, and, and Mike said right before we recorded, thank God we're recording late on Sunday because we would have missed this, and that's the Godzilla – X Kong: The New Empire trailer. Uh, I think that's drums. Godzilla Ten Kong. Oh yeah, um, if you're only if you're watching sure. it on an iPhone, um, or but, is it or is it Godzilla Cross Kong? What, I think, are we, what are we supposed to be doing here? I I, th- I just think I think the X is silent. It's like that anime Hunter Hunter, which is like, but it says like Hunter X Hunter. Or something yeah. Like so that. so yeah, is it Godzilla Godzilla Kong? What's Godzilla going Kong. on here? We're already off to a rough start here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I I actually I I'm a big fan of the, the new MonsterVerse stuff. Again, like I've said, with the Godzilla, um, the was it King of the whatever the, the second knows. was this is not a good sign chris that you can't even the titles the, the titles, the titles the suck movies. because because i know it's godzilla v kong but i'm like I, I i didn't have the new empire written in here until the trailer came out so i'm like i don't care about the title i know what i'm, I'm gonna see here uh and what this one was really cool for me is um and a lot of people may not know this mike I don't, you probably don't know this but like you get to see an evolved godzilla with his uh pink form if you will and uh have you ever seen a pink godzilla before mike I, I have not. I, is this a deep cut? Is this something no, it's, new? What's going on? It was on the, so um, American Godzilla, uh, awful, right? People like like it ruined Godzilla for a lot of people in the late nineties, ninety eight. 
in that time, Japan had like their reboot of Godzilla, which involved this more uh, evolved version, which had a more lizard-like face and like the pink um, spikes on it. Like his look evolved to be more you know, radioactive and more lizard-like, if you will, a little mm-hmm. more unstable. So they're borrowing from that actual like era of Godzilla from uh, the 2000s. So I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty hyped to see this. I, I think it's this cool. Um, they also got um, just so you know, Millie Bobby Brown is not back for this, Mike. Uh, I, I, they did confirm that. And, um, I think we I think we get a Dan Stevens though. I think we I saw we, Dan we got upgraded to a Dan Stevens. Uh, <laughs> I'll uh, take it. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, and then the Rebecca Green returns uh, as well. So um, I forget who else, who else was in those the other. They said someone else wasn't coming back. But it I don't doesn't remember. matter. It, yeah. uh, it does not matter. I mean, vis- visually, I love the visuals of the trail. Like the monsters look great. I mean, it's so crisp, clean. Like the last. They just shot keep improving of, them. Yeah, the last shot of Godzilla. Like the last like frame of the trailer like beautiful looks amazing but like uh this is uh i think slowly approaching fast and furious territory for me where like i I don't think these movies are gonna get any better i think they're just gonna add more uh visual eye candy to it uh i saw a quote i think it was from the director that said oh wow this is gonna be crazy we have like we have full like eight minute like scenes and shots that are fully animated. There's not a single human in there. It's just all like CG animation and it's just monsters doing their thing. And I was like, I know that you're using that to sell it. Right. But that's not selling it to me. Like, yeah, I want to see monsters like fight each other, but like, I just feel like it's just going to be a lot of, a lot of CG thrown up on the screen. And I I don't know. I I'm not, I'm not as hyped about this, but I'm still going to see. I I am the other, I'm like, I, this is the kind of stuff. Like I don't need tens across the board for every movie I watch or anything I ever watch. This is like, I'm just going to pop my popcorn in my mouth and watch the uh, Godzilla and King Kong team up to beat what appears to be another, like a, like a more orangutan, I guess villain. It looked like in this one. Uh, the 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 scar giver is his name apparently. I had a, you know I don't know I don't know the details, but they they put that in there. So I'm excited to just watch these 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 big titans duke it out. Um, I, I'm I am you know my concern would be every time I turn around they're they're like okay, Godzilla is getting another upgrade in every movie because he got Are that Mothra sure? one last time, right? So, Are you sure it's not the baby Kong around every corner? That, that, that was the, that's that the was, right flag. That was the that was the other red flag. But that lines up with Godzilla and King Kong. I'm like, if they're gonna do it, they're they're that is well within the uh, thing. Remember Baby Godzilla and like Son of Kong movies. Uh, all the, like I remember seeing that shit all the time on like those channels like at mm. ten and eleven at night that you're like, oh my god, why is this on again? Kind of thing because it was free. It, like they were like, oh, this is free commercial money for us. Uh, so it lines up, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't, to me that, because they have to have someone human size to be with the humans. I'm like, oh, I don't like these people. Just give me the creatures fighting. I want to see that all over again. Um, but I, I, I am excited kind of to, to dive back in with an actual Godzilla and see his powers. And, um, it looks, you know, again, to me, you may not like it, but it looks like at least the battle scenes look a little more, uh, it, there'd be more of them than just what the three we got in Godzilla versus Kong, right? The we talked about the when we reviewed that movie over during the pandemic. Uh, now I know Adam Wingard is the director. Did he direct the last one too? He did. He did direct the last one. So, um, so at least be you know consistent in that stuff. So I, I mean, I, I mean, I know you're not, but I am. I'm thrilled to, to have some some something to chew on for a little bit uh, while I while I just zone out and watch monsters punch each other. <laughs> Uh, moving right along here, um, Gen V just wrapped a couple weeks ago, and um, we were also promised until, not until the strikes were over for actors and writers, would there be a boys season four trailer? And they, uh, with both of those, uh, I think the actor strike has that been ratified yet, Mike? Or no? That's this week. I, I, I think there's, I, I think there's a couple like splinter groups that yeah. are like not wanting to sign the contract, but I think they're vocal minority, so I think this yeah. is going to get passed pretty easily. Yeah, so uh, the uh, the writer strike was that, so uh, yeah, December 5th. It's December 5th, so it is this week for that. For that. So um, we will we'll find out, but anyway, they, they went ahead and released the boys a season 4 trailer at CCXP. Um, teasing, I would, it's not teasing, more like, hey, this is just a continuation of the boys. Uh, I couldn't really pull anything out of this that was like shocking uh because the boys has really set a high bar for everything uh gory or you know um kind of just out there so i didn't really get anything 
like too jarring this, out of this, but it, it feels like a good continuation. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, I mean, the whole like political undertone of the boy of the boys has never really been um, an undertone, right? It's always been pretty prevalent, but this trailer makes it look like, oh no, it's really coming forward because I guess what Starlight is running yeah. for. No, I don't. I don't think running for something. There's there's some sort of political something happening. Well, yeah, it's the people who were standing with the seven or or who are against Vought is what the the last season ended with, right? Where she had the 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 recordings proving Homelander was Mm -hmm. you know an awful person, but people are like, well, Homelander, he is you know he is the necessary evil, if you will. So I I don't think they're running for anything, but I could be wrong. I I don't know. It's the the show's always good to watch. Because so. I think there's like a bit of a, a, a scene in the trailer where I think maybe uh, Homelander's talking to like a campaign manager or something like that that's giving him advice. And then, you know, we get a shot of Jeffrey Dean Morgan at the end, which is cool. Uh, yeah, it's Jeffrey great Dean Morgan was, again. A, was a big was a big grab for this. Yeah, right? because he's been he's been fully occupied with The Walking Dead lately, which is very unfortunate because I loved him when I was watching the show. So now I'm glad I get to see him someplace else now, finally, which is great. Um, but I, I feel like the, the boys is always at its best when you just hate Homelander, uh-huh. right? Which is, which is a struggle, right? Because I don't always want to turn a show on and just hate something the whole time, right. but like weirdly I enjoy it. And I feel like there's nothing but fuel and tender here to make me hate Homelander for another season. So, yeah. well, I'm, yeah. I'm gearing up. I'm ready to go. Yeah, I just went back and um, and watched it, and it's a courthouse, not a, not an election. It looks it looks like a, like a, a court scene um, with Starlight and um, Homelander on trial. But yeah, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, huge grab. Uh, obviously, the show is uh, I think produced by Supernatural, uh, and then Jeffrey Dean Morgan was in that. A lot of people were um, very very kind of excited. There's also one scene that looked like a multiple man, uh, like a guy splitting in, into different versions of himself. So. Uh, it's always it's cool to see how they take you know superpowers and skewer them on screen for, for evil. So I, I'm I'm excited to dive back into this again. Um, I think it's uh, just says 2024. I don't know. We don't have a release date yet. Uh, I couldn't pull anything out of the trailer, Mike. Can you on that? No, front? not yet. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll let you guys know more as uh, as we get closer. They usually uh, Amazon always has a huge boys presence at a uh, Comic Con, so maybe they'll have a. Uh, a season five announcement around they kind of wrap it up eventually you think five is going to be it for them i mean i feel like five's a nice solid number but also at the same time they're starting these um you know they're starting these spinoff shows so yeah uh, maybe a little bit more yeah uh and and we don't have any here but you don't have any other news but the boys mexico is was a spinoff that's in production i think we maybe even said it last week uh but it's just a that's the name of it. There's nothing else for any, for to dig out of that. It's just going to be set set down there. So we'll we'll see what comes out of that. Amazon Prime also hit the ground hard with their first trailer for the Fallout series based on the video game name uh, video game of the same name from Bethesda uh, nice. company. So this was um, really really this, fun to dive into. And this is the portion of the show where Chris educates yes. me and anyone else in the audience that really doesn't know what Fallout is. So I'll I'll lay down what I know what I know, Chris, which yes. is I've never played any of the games, um, but it, it's it's so um, present in like kind of like pop culture and then any any sort of like nerd adjacent communities, right? Mm-hmm. So obviously I'm familiar with it. All I know is there's some sort of apocalypse. I gotta assume it's nuclear in quality, yes. uh, being this series called Fallout. And there's underground communities, and it seems like your video game adventure seems to start when you leave like the underground like vault or yep. you know sanctuary or whatever. And I'm guessing you're not allowed back in once that happens. Yeah, um, that, that's as that's as far as I know. And I think like gameplay wise, which I'm sure does not factor into the narrative at all, but it's like kind of like turn based, but also first person shooter, well, depending yeah. on how you want to play. So the company that made this game makes uh, Skyrim, uh, Elder Scrolls games. So if you play the Skyrim game, it's gonna you're, you're gonna be familiar with again. There's items and equipment stuff stats you level up right the, all that game plays there but yes you, the story point is right mike so um essentially take 1940s post world war middle of the cold war era there there is actually a nuclear um you know attack on on the world 
everything people go live in these vaults if you will for 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 a couple of hundred years i believe you come out around the mid 2200s 23 started the 2300s or so um and you've been in a vault so everything you know is essentially the 30s 40s 50s era stuff right mm-hmm. and you come out and you're essentially just an irradiated wasteland with like mo- giant monsters like in the trailer you saw a huge cockroach right uh you mm-hmm. get to see the ghouls uh, as we get to see um one character played by walton goggins who is a ghoul right uh there uh, with the, the melted face uh, there's also the um the people who were not in the vaults you know who have come out are called the uh, brotherhood of steel we saw those with the metal suits a lot of people mm-hmm. associate those metal suits with fallout um but yeah the main character seems to be a vault uh liver who who gets to come out finally after years you can sometimes be left in but a lot of the vaults were created early on for uh, uh experiments how long can people live in these uh little vaults uh, forever so um you know there's fault there's three fallouts there's fault new vegas which takes place in vegas most of these take place on the east coast but this game um is actually in the same universe as the games mike and that's that's the, the cool part about this so it's not following a game but it does exist in parallel with all the, the events of the games that yeah, happen so, over- so question i have like story wise are are human beings allowed to like walk outside like are well, they gonna get irradiated like how much like Fallout yeah. is still like you know the, quote unquote left out in the world. So when you play the game, you have a um, one of those uh, like a Geiger counter on your suit, mm-hmm. uh, and it starts ticking higher as you get to more irradiated portions, and then you will take mm-hmm. um, was the anti radiation medicines to reduce your your ra- they call them rads, so your rads get oh, reduced. Okay. So yes, you can be out there. There are some that are very much irradiated, some are not. So it's not the whole places, but it's mutated. A lot of the people It's very you know scavenger based, but uh, you know get what you can because nothing's growing. If you get something good, like, you know, you better hold on to it or sell it for a lot of money. Uh, as you can tell, it's essentially just a post-apocalyptic world at the end of the day here. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, one of the cool things, it looks like uh, in this game, some of the vault members are irradiated, which was weird because in our uh, thumbnail, Mike, you actually put um, a, 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 essentially a Cyclops man, if you will, in a vault suit, uh, played by, what's this actor's name from Saturday Night Live? The- uh, isn't isn't he also the guy who vo- who voices the dad in Rick and Morty? Yes, I can't I can't think of the actor's name off the top of my head. Man, he's a, he's an uh, anchor man. He's always but anyway, he has a he has a uh, one eye. So obviously, it looks like he's mutated from the radiation, right? So it looks like there will be some like this might be a vault where you can come and go uh, as you please, if you will. Um, well, so I mean, as a person who has played the games, like looking at the trailer, does this seem to be? pretty yes. truthful to the world Does absolutely get you excited uh, yeah i excited is, is is very hard for me to be about this because i I'm, we're gonna talk about another video game i love here in a little bit that has a trailer that i'm also not excited for so i can like the games and not like the content but amazon has uh, you know obviously they don't shy away they're not pg 13 in this right there's some blood and gore in this right some mm-hmm. some stuff they, they've come from the boys they, they know how to put content uh, quality behind their content so i don't think they're gonna half-ass this so that makes me excited um but i'm gonna have to get a little closer than this teaser trailer for me to see what the story is even about why is this vault dweller leaving the vault what is the whole purpose of this show rather than just like hey here's some cool things you might remember from playing the games to get me excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, nails the vibe. The, the vault tech suits are there. Um, again, Walton Goggins, huge, great actor, a huge get. Uh, and obviously to um, obfuscate him behind a irradiated um, you know, skin and like remove his nose even uh, for the whole show, very, very yeah. entertaining. Uh, I mean, I looked pretty close at this dude's face uh, because I was Photoshopping him into our thumbnail, and I didn't know it was Walton Goggins at all. Yeah. Yeah, you see him at the end of the trailer in his like human form on a horse. Um but but he plays he plays uh the ghoul like an outlaw kind of character and then you know what how political is this going to be because usually the Brotherhood of Steel, the guys in the suits are more militant factions and stuff like that. You have to usually pick a faction you're going to play against. So I I'm excited, yes, but get me get me more a little closer to the show's release, Mike, and we'll we'll, we'll talk about how I feel. But how about you? As someone who doesn't play the games, are, do you want to see this? Does this have enough draw from this teaser to be like, yeah, maybe or, or no? I mean, I, I think it I think it looks good in a sense of we're getting a lot of money on the screen, which uh, is kind of Amazon Prime's like uh, MO when it comes to these uh, big franchise properties. Mm-hmm. So they're obviously trying to stake a claim here. 
hopefully they know that they're competing directly with shows like The Last of Us, which yeah. not only are giving you good visuals, but also just good story. So I hope the story is good as well. Uh, there seems to be a slight maybe comedic component to this in some way. Yeah. Like literally in the trailer, it says from the company that brought you um, the boys and free two day shipping. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, you don't put that on something that's supposed to be serious. Like you wouldn't put that in front of the last of us. Right. If you were cutting a trailer for it at, at Amazon prime. Yeah. So um, I think that could be fun. I'm looking forward they, to maybe. It, I would, I would say there. fallout games are, are, are very self-referential, right? That, that fifties, they know that's fifties humor in a lot of that uh-huh. stuff, like, like technology and references. So I think, yeah, you're right. They, they do have a little bit in there. That would be yeah. interesting. And you're not, and you're not going to be able to fake that aesthetic, right? You're, you're going to actually have to build some physical props. You're going to have to bring in like art direction to figure out what this world is going to look like physically on screen. Obviously they have video games to reference, which is great. So well, I'm guessing this has got to be eight episodes at max, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, whatever Amazon's average is, eight. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say ten, but, you know, we were wrong about the Monarch TV show on Apple um, <laughs> pretty quickly. But, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that's cool. That's cool to know. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to see some more um, as we, like I said, as the new year wraps up and we get into to next year and they, they start bumping that advertising a little bit. A uh, show I don't watch, uh, you probably do. Uh, Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, uh, season two trailer mm-hmm. dropped this weekend as well. Um, cool, happy for everybody who likes the show uh, and, and got to see more dragons and live in their Game of Thrones world. Mike, um, what do you think? You're, you're probably better equipped on this one than me. Yeah, I mean, if somebody really understands the history and lore of Westeros, they might have something more to pull out of this. Uh, to me, it was just like, okay, yeah, we got more. We got more dragons. Like I have nothing to pull away from this because I, like I remember liking the first season, but I was struggling to remember exactly what happened Mm -hmm. because so much kind of blends in with like regular Game of Thrones watching, and I kind of forgot where I was and what was going on. So yeah, we'll be watching it in our household, but like I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's happening. I can't keep track of these families at all. Mm -hmm. So really, you just kind of show you show up for the the pithy kind of royal put downs and then every other episode somebody gets beheaded which yeah. is exciting <laughs> a lot of dragons uh i, I like you get they, they keep adding more dragons in it looks like so um at least they're they're keeping to the name uh for this so uh i i again my wife's excited she watched the last one so she'll, she'll watch this one but uh you know uh this is a show that was um for those who like content this is great because this show was not affected by the strikes because it is a uh uk production so that's why they're able to uh meet the deadline when it comes out for next summer so um put that on your calendars and get ready for your house of the dragon next summer a show that i uh admittedly did not finish the first season of mike is halo uh and i love halo games you know this halo i Mm -hmm. like it's one of like the five uh, four or five pillars of my life is halo the video games and the lore and everything like this i just couldn't finish the first season i just you know uh, it's not it's not the games it's not the same story as the games it's like this parallel alternate story telling where you know they they're changing stuff around and i'm just not this wasn't in, enthralled with it it was a lot of not a lot of action it was more of like a lot of psychological stuff right like they they did they really pulled back the action stuff and they're trying to tell a bigger story and didn't care for it season two trailer dropped surprisingly today um with the release date of february 8th 2024 for season two and this looks to be maybe a little more action-packed did you watch it? I don't. I couldn't tell if the action was just being a tease or if it's going to be more, more action <laughs> I, or not. Thing is, like, I I watched the trailer, but you don't uh, remember much it either. Like you, Chris, <laughs> I I <laughs> I made it even even less far into the first season. So like, I'm just like, oh, did, did this stuff happen in the first season? Does this happen? To, is this like a hype trailer? Yeah. You know, where they're just letting you know that a trailer is coming? I, yeah, there's nothing yeah, discernible. There was like nothing- I was like I was kind of on the lookout of like, well, I know the. What are the aliens called? The, el- the, co- the, the covenant. The, the covenant. The elite. The, yeah, the covenants are collected. The elites of the big dudes with the swords. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, you know, I was kind of looking for the second trailer for like what were what were they? The brutes, kind of more mm-hmm. animalistic creatures. Yeah. Like I was looking for like hints of them in the second yeah. uh, trailer. Something you know that I know kind of evolves with the story with the Halo games, but I didn't really see anything. And also the whole time I'm going like I didn't even know this show got a second season. This yeah. is definitely one of those things where like. We're hoping the hype of the Halo franchise will give us enough audience. Let's just go ahead and greenlight a second season. 
Uh, and I feel like that happened before the show even came out. So yeah. I don't think that this is going to go much further. Past it, this. But, but we were talking before yeah. we started recording, Chris, when we were talking about Halo, uh, you were talking that this just got released elsewhere, right? Yeah. So Halo, the actual, the first season is now on YouTube for free. It was on Paramount Plus and I, we had a Paramount Plus subscription for a little bit. So, you know, I watched it. I probably, I probably lapsed, so I also stopped watching. But it's all on YouTube, so you can watch the entire first season of Halo on on there. And the Halo Season 2 is coming to Paramount+, Plus, so they're hoping maybe they get more view eyes on it with when it's not behind a paywall, such as Paramount+. Plus. Because the only people I know at Paramount+, Plus, Mike, are watching uh, Frasier. And uh, <laughs> that is about all they're using it for. I don't, like, I even told you before this... Uh, someone did the math on like streaming shows, you know, uh, recently, and Paramount has half the amount of content, TV shows or series and mo- movies even than it did a year ago. Like they are, they have less stuff to to offer for the same yeah. price. And it, and it's not necessarily because it's like evaporating into the ether. It's just like I I don't know if you give Zavlov necessarily credit for this because he's not the Hollywood good guy, but he's definitely kind of raise the flag for other streaming services that aren't Netflix to say, hey, the exclusivity of your catalog is not really driving subscriptions anymore. Start selling your stuff anywhere that you can sell it so you can bring in that money because that's what Mm -hmm. your shareholders want is cash. They want you to bring in dollar bills. So yeah, that's why he's like selling like all of Zack Snyder's stuff over at Netflix and the mm-hmm. Batman, the what the Matt Reeves one, right, is yeah. even over at Netflix right now, which is a very very good movie. So yeah. um, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe the strategy of putting the first season of Halo on you know something like YouTube, like you said, Chris, is to get audiences excited to get yeah. Paramount. Like I I almost think it wouldn't be a bad idea to just license Halo as a series to Netflix. I mean, yeah. that is going to be the best way to get as many eyeballs as possible. And I'm, I'm sure Netflix would gladly buy it. Like, well, Netflix also know. has their gaming portion of their app, right? So maybe you license it to them. You can stream some of the, the – there's like two top-down Halo games you can stream mm-hmm. to, to their app. Like it, it is it is not a far cry away from from something that Netflix could, could do. Um, my only concern, you know, Halo, why it has not worked, Mike, is number one um, – in this trailer, there's only one shot of the actual Halo, and I don't remember there any Halo on the first one, or maybe it was on the very end of the last episode because I didn't follow the, the the story. But like, when you play the game, like they should have just followed the games. Like the games have decades of story and books and and things like that. Why why did they they the real downfall was them trying to create a new story with like characters that you already care about right like like i don't know most of these characters i know master chief and you know a couple of them and you just don't care about them here because they're not the same ones and like they're you know you're not playing as that character so i really feel they messed they messed up pretty bad by not including yeah. the main games in here and that is why i even i as a gamer who play halo all the time loves this has the books has statues and, and the funkos and the art books just don't give a shit about the show at the end of the day yeah and so. i mean chris i, I don't want to i don't want to drive the knife in you know this is just me coming from a different perspective but i think the moment for halo has passed just yeah. in general right like there's not hype really for the games anymore like nobody's like breaking the internet or trending online when something new halo is released i'm not saying it's not a successful business that you can't get money out of still but like i don't think the fever is there anymore to build ancillary things like tv shows or movies well i i do but video games are are unique and since like you know like the last of us right it it there's two of them and then a remaster and they come out like every what five years or or more right is that like video game cycles are, and we'll talk about this with Spider-Man, are very weird cycles. Mm-hmm. So like if you were going to do this show, it should have come out when the game launched. Halo Infinite launched two years ago. Instead, the game came out and then a year later it was the show or some weird month later. Like it was, there was no, like, there was no synergy with it to, to build on the game launch hype. If you just put it in the middle of a game, game's life, like no one, no one really cares, right? The game's already kind of down at that point, if you will. Um, you know, uh, The Last of Us, the remaster had come out recently, right? And Last of Us 2 was, you know, kind of fresh. So that, that show was great. Halo has also been in the works since, like, what, 2009? Remember uh, the guy who did District 9 was involved at one point for a oh, movie yeah, with, with Peter Neil Jackson? Camp, yeah. Like, this has just been a disaster from, from day one. And, and it's it's not going to translate to movie. It's not going to translate to TV show. Some things 
just need to stay in their medium, right? At the end of the day, what, no, matter, no matter how big it is, no matter how much money Microsoft or, or, or Universal or whoever puts behind stuff, just leave it in the medium. Like, um, you know, Mortal Kombat, the game came out, uh, uh, the movie, uh, actually Mortal Kombat 2 is filming. Wouldn't it have been better if it came out when the game launched like a week or like a month or two ago? Like how you'd be like, oh, I'm watching the movie and I get to play the game when I go because I'm hyped about it. But yeah, like, I, and I get what you're saying. It's just, you got to have those right like there's beats right when things come out and when things are are in yeah. good life cycles and that was just a, a piss poor release yeah uh, to, to me it feels like uh halo is prime for like a universal reboot right mm-hmm. like uh not necessarily like a remaster of the first game because i know they've done that like a thousand times with halo already but like uh from ground up like reimagining let's kick this off again and start a new halo universe with a new story and a new perspective and since it's going to be since theoretically in my head, it would be like a brand new just um, beginning. Like maybe they change up the gameplay a little bit, add some new uh, but, mechanics so or, you know, the the thing it needs is Halo was great for 2001 through 2010. What it has not done is really, you know, call it, We don't I don't want a yearly Call of Duty style game either. Right. Because of, of it, you know, this quantity over quality. But the biggest games right now, and we mentioned the Fortnite, Apex Legends, you know, um, these these battle royale style games, and I know they are working on a Halo battle royale style game. But is that also did that bust too late? Like like if you're gonna evolve the game, do it faster, and and do it quicker than than hold on to it. I, I don't think they need a universal reboot. They could just skip the Master Chief section, right? Like this is a sci-fi universe. Jump to the future. Like you're dealing with aliens, just skip another 500 years forward, put us in there. Yeah, Halo. You know the the history, the the legacy of the Master Chief. We've heard about it, but we're moving forward, and there's some new new threats. Let's do that. I, I think is also plausible, right? So um, there's plenty of options, but boy, this TV show does not have me hyped at the end of the day. <laughs> and I'm the I'm the biggest apologist for for most things on this show, Mike. You know that. So we'll we'll figure it out. Something I never thought we'd see, Mike, is an actual third Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Yet here we are <laughs> with uh, an official uh, photo showing um, the onset model for Shadow the Hedgehog. Um, this movie is coming out December 20th, 2024. So we're a little over a year away and they're filming right now. And I, for one, never thought we would get this after the backlash of the original one's eyes. They did not like the model of Sonic. They re- the, they paused the movie, redid the, the, the actual model, and... And this thing has just been a success ever since, Mike. So, yeah, I, it, it, I can't believe is, the internet this, bullied somebody into <laughs> making something good. And, and this stuck. image is messing with my brain because uh, I saw this earlier this week and I didn't notice the kind of um, platform underneath the foot. I thought this was like a rendering. Uh-huh. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, they did a really good job like rendering that slate with the marker on it and everything. And I was like, oh, this is all physical. And then it made me think, oh, yeah, there are these really funny like on set shots yeah. of where they have these standees and they're putting them around places like so funny. Like what memorabilia? That'd be crazy. If you're like a supersonic fan, mm-hmm. like it'd be awesome to like own one of these. Um, I yet still have not watched a single Sonic movie. Oh, so that's... maybe there'd be a fun marathon here yeah. where i watch them all back to back and then hop on the microphone it, and try it to had, figure out what just happened it has no it has no right to be as good as it does it's actually a really good story and it's really really fun and they they handle it uh in, in a really good way and yeah uh, as, as someone who grew up with a sega playing sonic that just it just kind of hit those right points kind of like, not as good as the mario movie but it did have some nostalgia points ish is Shadow the Hedgehog going to have a ridiculous looking Uzi Gatling gun? Because I remember yeah. that's what he always using in the video games. And someone tells me they're not going to give this hedgehog like an AK-47 on screen. Um, I think. I sh- and maybe might. like they he'll have like a la- <laughs> Like maybe he'll have like a laser gun or something like that. You know, yeah. something a little less like lethal. Yeah. You know, he was known for his guns and joining the group called Gun, G-U-N, right? And uh, <laughs> But he's also, so people who don't know Shadow the Hedgehog, I had to look this up because I, I skipped the Dreamcast generation. He is Sonic Adventure 2, which was um, much later. He And he was just a, a fan favorite hedgehog. But he looks like Sonic. He's genetically engineered. Uh, but obviously a little time into this somehow. I want to. I don't know if they've announced who's voicing Shadow. Like the biggest thing with Knuckles was Idris Elba, right? Like voicing him. Mm-hmm. So I wonder who they're going to get for Shadow. Uh, not that I have anything in mind. Dame but... Judy Dench. Wow, what a what I'm a bold it. move. I'm calling it. Okay, what if it's Keanu Reeves? Hmm. Um, 
I wonder if that would be, I mean, uh, that would sell tickets, right? <laughs> if, 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 like if I had to be like, you know. But, but that Venn diagram's getting smaller with that yeah, overlap. Like if I had to be the, the cinema-minded, story-focused, you know, casting agent, it seems like you want to if someone to go a little bit more grizzled and dark where Keanu is maybe a little too like laid back. Oh, so, so, so is John. Voice, so but it's Nick Cage. I don't Got think it. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nick Cage. Oh yeah. Let's do it. Let's yeah. go. I love it. Yeah. So another, another overlap people who love shadow, the hedgehog and people who, who love Nick Cage. You know, that, that you know what's great. Small. If any of these three predictions pan out, Chris, this is the clip for social media. That's right. You know, you, you take out these moments, you, you throw it right up on there, and it's just like, bam, look at our credibility go through the roof. Yeah, we predicted well, this a while ago. If you, we, we shoot everything at this show, Mike, and something's eventually going to stick, right? So <laughs> we'll get there. Um, moving, moving right along. We don't have a trailer yet, Mike, but this week is uh, the, the confirmed trailer for Grand Theft Auto 6. And I... You're like, why are you bringing up more game stuff? Well, this isn't a game show. Well, we have a lot of games in the show. And Grand Theft Auto 6, Grand Theft Auto is a cultural phenomenon that will permeate not only video games, but movies and television shows for years to come. Uh, just the way Rockstar does it, the way this the, the Grand Theft Auto 5 is a 12-year-old game still crossing three console generations. Like, we're always going to hear Grand Theft Auto uh, in everything. And, and the trailer coming out um, for, for 6 this week is interesting because... I want to see where they take technology in this game. And will Rockstar ever sell the rights to make a Grand Theft Auto visual medium, like television series or movie of some kind, Mike, do you think? Yeah, it makes you wonder. Yeah, because the world in and of itself is not necessarily I would say compelling for like a movie or a TV show. But nothing it's that like, that we haven't seen they, before, right? Like, yeah. They, they're just it, heists and stuff. Yeah, it's the characters for sure. It's like these these characters that like aren't necessarily realistic because they're like they're kind of like zany, wacky side missions of these like these weird like like I think there was like one mission I played in Grand Theft Auto Five and I I never even finished the game, so like I'm pulling yeah. like this weird dude that like lived in his like basement and I think he was like building bombs or something like that. Yeah. So like there and he's like a weird, wacky character, so I feel like that's what you lean into if you're making into something yeah. else. But yeah, I weirdly enough, I'm also excited to see the trailer because I feel like Grand Theft Auto is always the one pushing the envelope for open world yeah. and it's been so long. And there's been so many developments since the last game that came out. It's like, I don't yeah. know if they have any sort of innovation left in them. I mean, I feel like everyone's lapped them a million times over since the last game came out. So, yeah, I'm looking for just some sort of, like, wild technological improvement. Yeah, there's been a bu bunch of leaks on this like, a couple years ago, a couple videos. There was some leak on a debug menu earlier this week. I, I've i got to say, I mean, I looked I, – I, I, peaked briefly my curiosity got the best of me it didn't really it wasn't leaked and ruined anything but i do think how rockstar is able to fit a, a, a map that big on a game that old is phenomenal right it shouldn't be it shouldn't work like that it shouldn't have worked on consoles 10 years ago that were already old uh by that point so i'm excited to see how they push that technological envelope but again the story has got to be important they keep making updates to grand theft auto online so much to see that people want to revisit uh vice city san andreas parts of the games uh, you know from those old uh, original xbox playstation 2 days so maybe they'll dive into that i don't know i want to see what it is but what is cool about rockstar is that they're their own publishing company so no one is telling them when they have to release this game right like they're not like they're not making a game for someone else to publish they're doing all of the work in the publishing so they're like yeah when we're done we're gonna release this game my guess is holiday 2024 uh, Mike for next Christmas or next holiday and we'll get a steady stream over the next 12 months before it comes out yeah like yeah. I, I don't I don't know if they could uh, reach like this is gonna happen at some point in the future and I keep thinking of AI and video games recently since I've been playing Spider-Man and Tears of the Kingdom especially Spider-Man it makes me wonder like no one's gonna take the time and hire artists to um, render and lay out and build models for the inside of every building right but what if you could like teach an AI model to like build the inside of buildings? So like theoretically, maybe that's the groundbreaking thing for like GTA like seven, right? Every building in the city you can actually go into. Now they might not all have something to do in there, but theoretically you could go in there and it'll be populated with like furniture and people and it'll resemble like some sort of business, right? Like that mm -hmm. would be wild and crazy. So um, I don't think that's going to happen in six, but that's what I'm looking out for. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, definitely something they could always add as they build on their online system, right? They're always pushing that base to online, which I think will pay dividends forward. So I think that's interesting. Uh, I am pulled up here the uh, top 50 video game list of best selling video games of all time, Mike, as of today. Mm-hmm. And uh, can you guess? Um, uh, there, are th- there are three Grand Theft Auto games in here uh, <laughs> that I was able to tell. Can you guess where what the highest placement is for one of these? I would think number one. No, Minecraft is the number one game of all time. Oh, uh, hands, I feel like it's down. a technicality <laughs> uh, by quite a bit. Grand Theft Auto Five is the second most sold game of all time, uh, and it is uh, currently a ten year ten year old game. Came out in twenty thirteen. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Four and San Andreas both uh, are about halfway down the list. So uh, yeah, huge huge phenomenon here. I'm excited to see if they end up taking a TV show or something. Is this something Amazon would pick up because they're not afraid to do the um, adult oriented shows right like the boys mm-hmm. like fallout uh um or you know is that a, is it a netflix kind of thing because all the grand theft auto games are th- or not all three san andreas and um by city are coming to the netflix stream game streaming app here in a couple uh weeks if not already so like is netflix going to be the one who bids and, and gets to do a, a gta show if you will so i don't know we'll keep you guys posted also the video game awards this week very excited mike that's like you know me. That's my my one of my money nights where I get to sit down and just like watch all these video game trailers for the next year. Uh, but we'll talk about more about video games at the end of the show. Star Wars Skeleton Crew, Mike, has been a quote unquote delayed a year. Uh, I said delayed because it never had a release date. So how can something be delayed if we never had a release date? <laughs> I don't know. But holiday twenty twenty four. That sounds right because of the actor strike. Right? They were they are not able to really promote it. Uh, Bob Iger is focusing on quality over quantity, so my guess is it's going to be slowed down to release the Star the Star Wars. I don't think had a content release problem, but I think holiday next year makes sense, right? For that, yeah. I mean, if I had to wildly speculate just for a moment, you know, this news does come off of the 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 tail end of um, Dave Filoni uh, being promoted to CCO, so. If I just had to throw something out into the world, maybe he's just like, hey, I finally got the power. We need to work on this a little bit. It needs some tweaking. I don't, I don't like where mm-hmm. it's at at the current moment. And now I finally have like the leverage to say something. Um, that's just real, totally throwing it out there. But um, yeah. I'm looking I'm, – I'm, I mean, we, we saw a, a, a bootleg trailer for it, yes. right? You, you sent that to me uh, yeah. in our messages a couple weeks ago. So – they definitely got part of it done, so it I, does seem that there is a, a delay involved. I, I think it, I think it's just a hold on to it and, and release you know again event content, right? That's what Bob Iger said. Because like again, Ironheart for Marvel's done. They're just holding on to it. Like we have no idea when Ironheart's going to come out. They stopped filming that over a year ago. So um, my guess is with the, again with the strikes, everything was just delayed and released because we have that. We have the Acolyte. Um, Acolyte will probably be first. And then uh, we have Bad Batch season three, this, and then um, another Star Wars Tales of the Jedi next year as well. So I think it'll be pretty good for Star Wars event. And then also, sadly, uh, Andor is probably not going to make next year and be pushed to 2025 due to the strikes. So that was an August release next year. I know you're losing sleep, Mike. I know you're, you're crying <laughs> over this. Um, but that, it just makes sense. You know, there was like, what, three, four, five months, six months of everything being paused. So this being delayed makes perfect sense. Um, that's yeah. not, it's not like I'll, I'm concerned about the show. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for you and or season two. Yeah. I'll wait till the ends of the earth. That's right. To, to someone's, someone's earth. Uh, let's jump into some Marvel stuff here for the rest of the show. Uh, big rumor this week, uh, was that, uh, the Nova series that was rumored for Disney plus is being reworked as a movie, um, to shift focus away from expensive Disney plus shows. Um, Which is funny because I swear I thought it was supposed to be a movie first, then they got switched to a series. So in my head, I feel like it's back to being mm -hmm. a movie again. I don't know. Um, There was uh, James Gunn did reply to a comment online where somebody is like, oh, my favorite character is Nova. I had heard rumors that at one point Nova was possibly planned for one of the Guardians movies. And I guess since Gunn is fully out of the pocket of Marvel now, he you know, he responded to it and he was just like, nope, it never happened. It was never even planned. It was never even the yeah. script. There wasn't even like a, so it seems like Nova is still fresh. No one's really been yeah. working on it, at least from a gun point, point of view. You the, know? the only thing I'd had from Nova was that the, um, 
there's it was an early draft of uh infinity war because of the xandar uh planet was wiped out for the reality mm-hmm. or for the reality stone and they were going to show that like you know there was one person left who was nova like who survived it and that's mm. that was like the messenger but they just scrapped that whole section of the movie and just said he got it so um that was about the only thing i'd heard from nova and this also just to be marked not to be uh confused with the anya taylor joy playing nova 2 in fantastic four like the herald of galactus the nova no that nova so Oh, um, oh yeah, that yeah. They probably won't do that. They don't want too many Novas in one universe. Nobody, no, the general public doesn't even know Nova exists yeah, yet, so they're not going to throw two Novas in the universe. exactly. So and, and like, and if they are doing the Anya Taylor Joy Nova version, like literally, someone could, who who doesn't know walk past that whiteboard, Mike saw the word Nova and assumed it was this Nova on the first Google search. Right. So, Oh, maybe, maybe um, we're so, always, we're always, we always hoping that we're, someone's going to glance this whiteboard. No, nope. my, my concern is nobody who works in there knows how to leak this stuff appropriately. I, my guess is they're like, they're, they're seeing stuff they don't even know about. I'm like, how are you working in this? No, and not knowing this is the, things. This is the entire problem with the last phase of Marvel. They had it all perfectly laid out on a whiteboard. And then, um, the cleaning crew, they just flipped it over and they couldn't find and they, it. And they didn't write down, you know, you're supposed to say, don't erase. Uh, yeah. in the top corner of like and then they erased it you know it was a new it was a new person they just knew hire they cleaned it off and it's just like oh man and, right, and they couldn't tell pivot. they couldn't tell anybody <laughs> like they haven't told anybody yet either like they're yeah. like yeah we we know and they're like analyzing what's on the dry erase mm-hmm. but like the mark like the indentation on the board analog still. man the problem with the analog world. yeah yeah they just flip it over they'll find, they'll find it on the other side uh, Doctor Strange, um, Bruce Campbell has been out doing some interviews. I don't know what for. Um, I don't Damn, know what he was doing. doing. Uh, but he Bruce says, Campbell, what are you up to? I don't know. But he says all his, he says his Spider-Man and his Doctor Strange characters are all the same character. And I'm like, can you? Yeah, I'm sure you said that in your mind, but I don't think that's true. Like, just because an actor says it's true, that doesn't mean it's true. So, yeah, I, I would I would think it. It's more of a like, oh, when he approaches to play the character, he thought yeah. it would be fun just to play the same one. Yep. Because, like, I he comes from the universe – was literally the only difference of his universe that the, the pizza was – what was the pizza again? I don't even remember. Something to do with pizza, right? Yeah, the pizza, pizza papa was his name. I don't remember what he – But was like, it was like little pizza? Was I, have, I, don't, like, I don't remember. He, he's very forgettable. He just comes back at the end credits. He has to punch himself the whole time, right? He's like punching himself the whole time. Oh yeah, that's right. But yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that man literally. He's yeah. great. Yeah, but like you nothing against don't, them. Never trust. Doesn't matter what the actor is, <laughs> like yeah. unless they directed the movie, like an actor that directs it. Yeah, you and, can't and I'm pretty sure, like this is one of those situations where it was probably the interview. I'm like, do you think your characters in Spider Man and Doctor Strange were all the same person? He was like, yeah. That sounds cool. <laughs> like, like he's not sitting there thinking about this stuff. Someone asked him that, and that's the answer they got mm-hmm. out of it. Because, you know, interviewers will lead them for an answer that gets them clicks. <laughs> yeah. On, on the what's website. that? Uh, what's that Christopher Nolan quote where he was? Somebody asked him about Batman, and he was just like, "I refuse to comment because if I say anything about Batman, that will be the headline of the article, and no one else will read anything." Yeah. And then they made that interaction the headline yeah. of the article, so he was totally right. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, my guess is someone asked him, let, let him on the question. He's like, yeah, sure, that's fine. Sure, what? Yeah, yeah, put that down. Deadpool three, uh, another another actor rumored for this. This is back filming, by the way. I've seen a screenshot of uh, from the set, and I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to ruin it for anybody. But uh, they are bringing back some people from from X Men stuff. But Daphne Keene, who played X twenty three in Logan, is rumored to have signed back on. She's more of an adult now. She is in Star Wars Acolyte as like an adult actress, uh, more than a little kid. So. Um, I guess they bring back an adult X twenty three, maybe an alternate universe version of her. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this would be. I would think if you're bringing back, you know, Daphne Keene, who we've only seen in one movie as X twenty three, right? I would yeah. love to just see a continuation of her character from Logan, like the literal same character. So she yeah. finally got saved. She got rescued. You know, the connection that she made with Logan, her savior who died in the woods for her. Right. Yeah. Like that totally affected her pathos. And so I would love to see that on screen. And then like, it would be a crazy moment for her to see other Logans that, you know, aren't, isn't her Logan. Mm-hmm. I think that would be really, that would be really powerful and interesting. Well, now, she, I'm saying she, all this she kinda, dramatic stuff she that's kinda, happening in a Deadpool movie. Well, she also saw that like in that movie though, because there was the clone of Logan that was trying to kill her. Oh yeah. Well, I'm saying like now <laughs> if she's an adult, she hasn't uh, seen a, a Logan in a while. Yeah. Um, so gotcha. yeah, I just hope it's the same one. 
Yeah, I, I think it's fine. Yeah, I, I think if, if that's true and this is another one of the 100 million people they're bringing back, she's fine. I think that's a great, great. it's, it's tied to Wolverine more than the X-Men. I think it'd be the only person from that movie who would need to come back, right? Like, there's no one else in Logan. I'd be like, yeah, they got to come back to the, they, got, they need to that person who is only in Logan to come back. She's like the only person out of that who would mm-hmm. need to come back. So absolutely fine. Marvel Zombies, the spinoff animated show from What If, uh, is still in production. And uh, I'm in Volani, Miss Marvel. Uh, she was out doing interviews, I think, for the Miss, for the Marvels, now that they're allowed to do that. Uh, said that Miss Marvel is, a, is one of the leading characters in this animated series. So she did all the voice work. They said so they wrapped up a while ago on this, the voiceover work. Um, and that she, quote unquote, is basically the Frodo of the series. So my guess is there's some sort of zombie cure or kill all in this show that they're going to be working with. I'm surprised. I I swear I thought her character was in the first season of What If, but now that I think about it, it doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, we have not really seen her character uh, illustrated in that animated style at all. But, yeah, I'm cool with that. Like, one of the few things that's working on a character level-wise in Marvel right now is Miss Marvel, Mm -hmm. um, Kamala Khan. Um, so more of her is not a bad thing. And she wrote a Miss Marvel comic book and she's writing another Miss Marvel comic series Ooh, after the success shit. of the first one. So I she know, is, I didn't know she was writing. That's awesome. Yeah. So she is really enveloping this character right now. Like, like if I was her age and like had this opportunity, I would be eating it. Like I would be thrilled. Like she's just taking mm-hmm. all the opportunities and she's obviously having fun and doing well at it. So I, I, I applaud her for doing that but for this um this uh, you know the a zombie series with like some sort of cure-all some sort of mission where they have to go deep into zombie territory that it sounds about right so we'll we'll see how this goes when it when they give us more teases for this eventually uh last bit of marvel here this kind of came out of another rumor as well um is the, uh, that they are rumored to be working on multi-season series for spotlight characters. And Mike, do you remember what a spotlight character is now for Marvel? Oh, Chris, I cannot, <laughs> I, I'm so confused. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Cause when you say like multi seasons for spotlight characters, I thought just the other week we said like spotlight characters were only going to be getting like one well, season. No. And then they're, and then they're, it's kind of like the Marvel presents, like they're shifting that moniker. I'm so confused. The spotlights <laughs> are just things that don't affect the larger Marvel universe. I would say earlier characters like echo and wonder man probably are not going to get multi-season shows, right? Like characters who felt like they were born out of necessity of make something rather than, Hey, we want to do popular characters. So this, um, the, the characters rumored for this uh, to be in the works, and this is very early on, uh, are the Punisher, Ghost Rider, Alpha Flight, the Runaways, Jessica Jones, and select members of the X-Men. Uh, and again, these will follow the new TV series production rules with TV showrunners, writer rooms, all that stuff, but may not arrive. I mean, my guess is if they're talking about this now, Mike, these may not arrive until post-reboot era stuff. So they may be planning really far ahead on this right like things that that we want to plan for in a few years because a we know how long it takes to write something we know how long it takes to film something we already have all the plans up until the end of secret wars so let's get these things done now so we're ready to launch uh with quality come yeah come a reboot like like i'm really curious too what they mean by the moniker of like spotlight like i know we've been throwing throwing around this like idea that these are supposed to be things that don't ladder up to the MCU at large. But I mean, there's some entire MCU movies that don't ladder up to the MCU, you know, at large, like Ant-Man two was really only part of the MCU. Like if you look at like the post credit scene, right, it's a, it's a, it's own contained movie. I mean, I might not like it very much, but it, it is pretty self-contained. I mean, and that's always what the, the, the pathos for all of these movies, like they just need to be good standalone movies on their all that they say, so I, I feel like I'm trying to figure out what this well, is because I don't like yeah. the idea of committing to a Marvel TV show that doesn't do anything to the grand universe. Like it doesn't have to do a lot, but I don't want it to do nothing. Like I feel like, I mean, I this isn't a good example because I really didn't like the second half of Moon Knight. But Moon Knight doesn't connect to the Marvel Universe whatsoever, but I have expectations that it should at some point in time. So, like, it doesn't have to be big, 
right? But I feel like they should have a little connective tissue. Well, they can have a little, but like if I'm watching Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider's not going to save the world from Galactus, right? Like I don't like, like that's I guess again, we don't know what Spotlight means. They've not even put out one single show based under this banner. So it's probably very vague to even them. But like I'm not expecting the Punisher to have any sort of butterfly effect upwards to anything at all. Now he may reference the world, but like, I don't expect him to make a difference in a bigger scenario. Right? Like if I'm watching secret wars, what's the punisher going to do? Shoot some people with actual powers. Like, yeah, I guess maybe like, are they just trying to get ahead of like the criticism of, you know, they're making uh, a daredevil show and, you know, Spider-Man doesn't pop up in it. So they could say like, Oh, well it's a spotlight show. That's why you're not seeing Spider-Man. It's like, Nobody expects to see Spider-Man yeah. in Daredevil show. So, yeah, I don't I, – I, I personally don't think they need these clarifications, right? You know, it doesn't – just make something good my, no my matter guess, what. And we will, nobody's going to care if something pops up or We not. will never see – I don't think we'll ever see the name Spotlight. It's probably just an internal mar- – like for them, like, hey, this is a Spotlight thing. You know, when you do it, you know, you don't – we don't need to make sure that this ties up – you know, wraps up bigger at the, at the end of the day. It just, it just makes sure it's a good show, right? If anything, all these just need to be good shows. It doesn't matter what it ties to. Uh, as long as they're, they're quality content coming out of them, I, I don't care if they tie to anything at all. So um, and I think that's fine. I, I disagree with your Ant-Man 2 thing, though, for anyone who wants to listen, because Ant-Man 2 leans into, ties into Quantum Mania with the ability to go into and out of the Quantum Realm with uh, the ability there, but that's, that's neither here nor there. I think I think that movie is it's not a good movie, but it's underrated. Uh, but I'm I'm excited for for more stuff. I, I again this TV stuff, you know, they can talk all they want, but until we see something, yeah, that's that's going to be a different show, right? Like coming off of Secret Invasion, we're still kind of burned a little bit mm-hmm. until until we get our new stuff. All right, Mike. Finally, at the end of the show, this is what you've been waiting Woo! for. This is there we go. I've been waiting to talk to you about it because I've been sitting on this since at least before Thanksgiving, and yes. and here we are. You know, week two weeks later. Uh, I, I say probably I was probably even further back than that. Um, if I'm going to be honest, but like Spider Man Two for PlayStation Five, the game that has just come out. Um, not the not the other Spider Man Two games. The the dozen of them out there. So it's really hard to find the subreddit for this video game. Yeah. You really have to get creative. With like, are they using Insomniac Spider Man, or is all of the community just still on the Spider Man One game? It, I think it's like, Spider Man PS Five, isn't it? Is what they call I, it. Or I think it might just be Spider Man Two actually, because I sorted the posts by top. Because that's usually what I do to see, like, oh, where, what were the most popular memes or opinions about the game? And then I literally saw a post for, like, the original Spider-Man 2, like, on PlayStation or whatever. So, uh, getting a little hard to categorize the internet when things just oh, yeah. reciprocate all of the time over and over again. It's a, I'm going to be honest. The, one of the, thi- the, the only thing I hate about this game the most, my biggest one is the name sucks. Get a better name. Like, you, you can have subtitles in your game, right? God of War had Ragnarok. Spider-Man... It's called Spider-Man Venom. Or Spider-Man, give it a give it a subtitle name, right? Like, give it something better than Spider-Man Two, because I think that's a that's a that's a disservice to the Miles game, which is a prerequisite to play this, uh, and also just uh, lazy work, just lazy. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, this is full spoilers. We're not gonna talk about you know I don't I, I don't want to pull any punches because I I think you have to talk about the whole game when you review this game because there's a lot to it that you don't know going into it. Yeah. So. Um, they're full spoilers, so if you've not played this game, don't want to know anything about it, back out here. Um, you know, when you play it, you can come back. But uh, let's just go ahead and just rip off that band-aid yeah. for, for spoilers. Yeah. I say we just jump into it. And at first, let's just strictly talk about story. As if you were sitting down in front of like a compilation YouTube video and you only kind of saw mm-hmm. like cutscenes and important dialogue. So uh, I was really happy with the story overall. There's some things that, you know, uh, perturbed me a little bit towards the end, uh, which is such a pretentious word. Why did I say perturbed? This is a video game review about a story. I don't need to be saying that. Calm down. (laughs) But I like the story overall. I mean, I love this idea that Harry is the one that becomes Venom. They, They really make that makes sense you know norman is the one who has the capability to find like an alien rock and do something bad with it and his son being sick you know the the sickness in the osborne family is a theme that crops up quite a bit in spider-man mythology Mm -hmm. so i was already prepared for something like that um the way the symbiote just kind of slowly moves throughout the story is really interesting you know you're so heavily focused on craven for so much of the game 
And um, once you finally kind of switch over to the symbiote side of the story, it's just like, you're like, wow, they have so much more in store for me here, story-wise, on the back half of the game. Yeah. And it, it was just... Yeah. It just it was just fun storytelling moments overall and I thought the the voice acting and then the the characters were great um it, weirdly enough like I don't want to say like like cuz they made Peter Parker prettier than the very first game right but I feel like they added more like organic unique shape faces to Mary Jane and Harry and not in like a in a bad way like they almost look more human where peter looks less human to me right he looks more like a video game character mm-hmm. whereas like the other characters look like they're modeled off of like real actors and i don't know if that's the case or not so that was a little hard to get my head wrapped around but yeah overall i, I thought the story was strong yeah so for someone who who goes through all the show notes every week mike uh and and gets spoils and clicks on things and see things, you know, because, you know, they're not hidden or, or pulled away that. So it's, uh, for me, there were tons of surprises left in this game. And I was really, really happy for that. Like to be surprised in a video game, as much as I play, as much stories as I see, as much articles as I, as I go through, I thought I would know everything. I'm like, Oh, it's mm-hmm. Craven. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, the villain's going to be there a little bit, you know, but, but really the main villain's Craven. Well, Craven's like the first half of the game to be completely honest. Uh, and then I can't believe they just fucking killed him off. Uh, and I, first shock, number one, they killed Craven. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. this is different. Because at that time, I actually, you know, thought maybe Craven could be the Venom person. Like, they really didn't. Yeah. Like, they like, Craven could be the person who gets Venom by the end of this game because he's bigger, yeah. he's bulkier, he has, like, that Craven build. So And he also, they seem to be hinting that the symbiote is craving a stronger host, right? Because yeah. whenever Harry got too close to Pete, like the symbiote would start to crawl over. So I was like, oh, well, the symbiote's going to fucking love Craven. That's like everything that the, that the, that the goo is looking for. Yep. And then, yeah, they just, they just kill him. And yep. I was like, oh, this you is gotta, wild. You, so you got to kill Craven as Venom because you get to play as Venom. Didn't expect that either at all. That was a nice little, little bit. Um, I didn't expect, you know, Mike, I didn't expect anti-Venom to be a part of this either. The, the anti-Venom yeah. suit. That was huge. Mary Jane becoming Scream. Uh, uh, that's the that's the coolest Mary Jane has been in, yeah. the, in this whole game franchise so far. Absolutely. Uh, and then obviously, you know, um, Miles becoming the prime Spider-Man at the end of this, right? Becoming the main Spider-Man for essentially going forward in this universe uh and and you know being the person who kind of defeats the symbiote it was just there was a lot of hits left and right and i wasn't expecting them and i i was i was thrilled to have those shocks and all so i'm like oh this is in the i've seen this in the comic book i've seen this in the, this is great this is awesome and i'm very was just very hyped to to not know them beforehand uh as, as i went through so i really got to give them credit for that it, it's a great story um, I, I agree with you. 100% great story. Very unique. Very original. Fits very well. Again, if if, if you're listening to this, you've probably played Miles if you play Spider-Man 2. But Miles, you have to play. Like, that game, I'm really surprised. That, like, you got to play these games beforehand. You know, make them, make them available. Because I really enjoy having both both perspectives of both characters throughout this, right? Like mm-hmm. having Miles and his his ancillary characters, you know, the Prowler side missions, his mom is the councilwoman, uh Ganke, uh you know, his little his girlfriend kind of there throughout, you know, his his high school, uh, which was different, was great. Peter, Mary Jane, we got to see some hairy flashbacks when they were like young teenagers, which I thought was really cool to have like the nerdy Peter Peter Parker, you know, skin for a little bit in the school. Um really just really told a better story with all these characters already fleshed out getting in there. So, um, absolutely. Yeah. I will say my, what I, um, the, and also the opening scene with Sandman, very cool opening scene, really, mm-hmm. really hits the ground running with a huge bombastic Sandman scene that Man, shows you what the PlayStation that, five can do. So early on in the game, like yeah. it took me longer to beat the game, obviously than you, um, but that almost seems like a totally different game ago. Yeah. Like I forgot that that was even in the game. There's so much to play here. Yeah, yeah, and it opens with that huge scene um, with, with that, which I, I thought was was really really cool. Again, we've always talked about before, and the, the bigger maps was cool. Having the, the smaller suburbs on the right hand side of the map, I thought was very mm-hmm. unique uh, for traveling. I love the web wings. God, I love the web wings. When we talked about the yeah. game before, just absolutely love them. 
Yeah. Well, before we jump into gameplay, because I, I, I have a lot to say about gameplay. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there were kind of like two story moments that I didn't think were super effective. Uh, first of all, uh, Miles kind of getting his like final suit mm -hmm. uh, totally did not hit for me. Uh, if, first of all, I think I know this is preferential, but I think the final suit that he gets before you go into the final fight just looks ugly. It's like this really weird, like giant blue kind of like neon glowing, like lightning bolts. And then he kind of like has partial a mask. And then he's like also wearing sneakers that they make sure that on the camera movement, you see the Adidas logo. So, so it kind of just looks like a, a the... sponsorship. I'm crammed pretty, into the story. I'm pretty sure it's an Adidas suit as well. Um, I, I think that was that was part of the design. I, I actually I kind of liked it having something unique and fit to like that fit Miles' personality and like I I, yeah. I didn't care for it. I didn't mind as much. It wasn't jarring so for me. Vis so visually, but you can change your suits I, at any time. This is great. Yeah. So visually, I'm not going to argue with anybody that says that they like the suit, but I don't think the story moment worked yeah. over well anyway because like really his the thing driving miles through the story most of this game is that like he's trying like classic spider-man trying to balance you know his superhero life and then also applying for college he doesn't know what to say about himself he doesn't feel like you know he knows exactly what he should be doing and how he should be splitting his life up but then at the end he kind of has this cathartic moment where he's just like oh i put the suit on you know i just felt like you know it was time for me to be mean it's like well, you had that moment in your own video game. Like mm -hmm. that was like the whole, that was like the whole thing driving you yeah. through your own game that we all played before this. So that kind of fell on deaf ears. Oh, it just felt, uh, it felt, un for it me. felt <laughs> rushed slash unearned, right? Like if you get a new suit, just say you get a new suit. Like, uh, you know, yeah, like Peter goes through three suits, right? His original suit, uh, the black suit, and then the anti-venom suit. And they all had story beats to them, right? Like mm -hmm. why? And you even get to see them change. Miles just showed up in a new suit. Um, you know, at least in the first game, it showed him making it. You know, right, going through the designs. Like, it would have mm -hmm. been cool if, like, maybe his girlfriend, uh, the artist, had designed something, and he was like, "I'm gonna pick her design because I like her design and it fits my culture and, and who I am better than just showing up in a new suit." Uh, yeah. But I, I always change the suits anyway. I thought some of the the the, the other suits were pretty cool. For him. So I, I actually did the I did the opposite this game is I never changed the suit really at all when I was really diving into the story because like a lot of the story really revolves around what all of the main characters look like, right? Mm -hmm. Like when he gets the black suit, like why would I take this black suit off when every interaction he's having with every character has to be like, whoa, Pete, you're looking pretty like intense right now. What's going on? Uh, he's I, like, well, I'm not going to change the suit. This is going to totally take me out of the well, immersion of the story if he's not wearing the black suit during no, these no, moments. I, I changed it to Raimi's Spider-Man 3 black suit. No, I, I mean that's that's not a bad idea. That's I didn't. A, I didn't change fun, it. I didn't go. Fun. I didn't go very well because again, if I was recommending anyone, who, if you already listen, play, play, please play the game. But like, don't spend your points on suits because you need to get your abilities better, or else you're gonna get your ass whooped in this game because it's not yeah. as easy game as the other one was. Yeah, they do. They do a great job. Let's just yeah, let's jump into the gameplay because they always do a good job of like cranking the difficulty. Like just when you yeah. start to get comfortable, they throw people at you that'll just like destroy you. So you're like, oh man, I can't just go in and mash square anymore. Mm -hmm. But the part of the game where I got to start using stealth, I got to start using the gadgets, you know, I got to make sure I start chaining my combos or I'm going to get rocked. Yeah, absolutely. I, and to me, it's the point whenever, like, the, the game completely changed and they added the symbiote hives in the world because I was like, why have I not, why have I not unlocked this stuff on, to do on the map yet? Why is it hidden? Oh, it's story related. Boom, symbiote hives. And you have to protect these two bombs. Like you're, you're, you're putting mm -hmm. bonds on the similar things and they go like, Oh, here's just single ones. And like, Oh, protect these two. And you have to bounce back and forth oh so quickly to stop the, the enemies from hitting these bombs. So you're like, yeah, I'm pulling stuff out of, out of like, you know, button things I've never used, but you're using everything <laughs> at your disposal to save those bonds oh, yeah. because the game is literally throwing some of the hardest stuff at you. And I, I think I appreciated that about it. Yeah. And, uh, we mentioned this the last time we had first, uh, impressions of this game a couple weeks ago, but the single best thing that they did gameplay wise for this game outside of, you know, the traversal of the web wings is for sure. The, uh, the gadget wheel is gone mm -hmm. in the previous games. You had to pull up this gadget wheel that takes up your entire screen. It pauses it's, time kind of a little bit yeah, while you're doing yeah, it. Yeah. 
Yeah, so like, but now everything is uh, down in the corner of your screen. So if you want to use any of your extra abilities, you're using uh, L1. And if you want to use mm. any of your gadgets, it's R1. So everything is clear as day right there. You can see how much charge you have left on anything. You can see how many gadgets you have left. I've never used gadgets before in the previous games because like I, I always forgot about them because yeah. they weren't there so right. now I see them and like when you're talking about those symbiote bomb protection things like you can't do it without the gadgets yeah. like the the fully upgraded like sonic, sonic booms yeah ones, you gotta like you gotta keep one of those active over there by the other bomb and then you gotta be and then once you get towards the end like when you only have like 20 seconds left they start throwing like all of these symbiotes come out of nowhere and then you're just like, oh, I got to survive just like 10 more seconds. I just fire off like every single yeah. gadget that I have left. I start doing every ability. Stuff's going crazy. Luckily the PS5 can handle all this. There's no oh, way yeah. the PS4 could have handled all of this, all no. of this madness that's going on on screen. So I just love that I get to use the gadgets now and I yeah. like them. They're so fun. I, I love the abilities that do more damage versus different enemy types. So like when I'm, we go up against the vit the again the venom the symbiose i pull out my spider-man anti-venom suit because he has that ability where he pulls them all up and sends spikes out in every direction and like mm -hmm. disintegrates them i'm like thank god for this because i would be so frustrated at this as much frustration as i'd have playing a mary jane uh level with with her little stun gun that oh my gradually god. got upgraded. Okay, yeah let's 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 talk about mary it's, jane i've talked okay. about it and I, I warned you I, I warned you last time we talked about it. I'm like they 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 come at you and let's, they don't get any better Let's let's talk. OK, so I feel like they listened to feedback, but they went they had the wrong solution, which was just like, all right, well, everyone hated the Mary Jane stealth mission. So let's give her let's give her more agency. We'll give her a stun gun. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like stupid and it kind of is stupid. And I don't like that. It breaks the kind of immersion of the world of the game, right? Like I'm Spider-Man. I'm a literal superhero with all of these things at my disposal. And it still takes me like five, six seconds to fight like one Craven hunter. Yep. Right. You know, especially the powered up ones. I really got to go at it. You're telling Mary Jane, all Mary Jane has to do is sneak up on one of them with a stun gun and they're down for the count. Yep. But I got to mash together a 10 hit combo and kick them off the roof to kill them that's what annoyed me and I, and I know it's like video game logic and this most people won't care about this but to me it's just like come on this is this I, is not working for I, me. <laughs> yeah i'm on the other i don't need i don't need realism in my video game to find that she does that i just don't i just wish there was like do you want to skip this section yes let me skip this yeah. section can i just watch I the cut scene because i like it gets like i even saw someone said it and i agree with it. it feels a little gears of worry at some point like when you're fighting the symbiotes with the stun oh yeah gun version, i'm like i'm like becomes a first person shooter. yeah you're just like i'm just shooting all these things in it because it's, it's running at me and i got nothing else to do it's all big gooey oh, and my... slimy so i'm like yeah i hate this and like i can kill a symbiote behemoth by just spamming this taser yeah like no i don't well like i don't that. i don't care but again i my realism doesn't bother me I just don't want to do it. I want to play Spider-Man in my fucking Spider-Man games, Mike. I don't yeah. want to be Mary Jane with a, a with a stun gun. So. Especially when a lot of the Mary Jane story moments ladder up to pretty intense moments in the game. So you just want to get them done because you're about to be Spider-Man yeah. that like finally like sees Craven yeah. and the world for the first time, or you're finally about to like fight Venom at the end yeah. of the game and you got to get through this Mary Jane stuff. I saw some people online that what they were doing is I, I didn't know this, but you can like change the difficulty of the game yeah. at will at any time. So I guess some people will open up the menu put it to the easiest difficulty and literally it makes Mary Jane like invincible mm -hmm. and you just run to the end of the encounter. Now I, I want to be clear. I like Mary Jane as a character. I right. like what she's doing. I thought it was really interesting that, Oh, she's working for Jameson in this mm -hmm. game and she hates it, but you know, she's an adult. She's got to pay money. the bills. Yep. So I, I like that she was kind of going against that. And then at the end, she ends up making a podcast, which, you know, yeah, I think we can both uh, approve of, of that. I hate it. Every, no more podcasts. <laughs> There's too many podcasts out here. <laughs> so I like her as a character. And when she turns into Scream, really, really cool moment yeah. because they do a really good job building up the relationship. It's good stories. Her and it's very emotional. Yeah, like, it, yeah. yeah. And it's just like, how do you fight the woman that you love? You got to save her. And her character looks so cool. I love yeah. that design of Scream. And, and she's the just fight being mean. She's being mean as hell about it. Like, yeah. So, so like, I want to be clear. Like, I have nothing against the absolutely. character. Yeah. But the gameplay, it's like so boring. Like, I just, I rush it, through it. And it, like, I just, and you can kind of, if you're kind of 
relatively adept at just stealth games in general, which a stealth is like a game genre, which I love. Like I can kind of like read like the past pretty easily and I can run through it like yeah. pretty quick, thankfully. But yeah, whenever you get caught up on some sort of like dumb moment where you have to like wait for a character to walk or something, I'm just like, come on, I just want to yep. get this done. Well, yeah. It, well, it's, 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 I understand the gameplay. I understand everything. I understand it. That, like, I, and that's the worst part is I understand mm-hmm. it. And I, I get everything, what they're doing, but like it grinds everything else to a screeching halt because you've been literally having so much fun with other gadgets and swinging and flying around and doing story stuff. And then it's like, eh, oh, you got to walk through this and like, like you said, wait on somebody to turn their back so you can get them. And I'm like, I hate this. I hate this so much. I'm banging my head off the desk. Uh, getting through though so i just wish you know if it was, it was an option do you want to play it yeah i'll come back and play it later or you know just let me watch a cut scene i think it'd be a great cut scene instead right instead of, of doing all that stuff so i just i'm just down on that i think that leans into my 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 biggest complaint about this game mike which doesn't take away from the game but it is part of the gameplay portion is there is not enough side things to do anymore they have really pared down everything to do post game to where I felt I beat it way too fast, all the side stuff, because there's not enough hideouts. There's not enough you know, side missions. Yeah, the photo ops and the hidden backpacks were tedious, but I enjoyed doing it in the first one because I got to see the city. I got to learn the city. They don't have any of that stuff here. They just have a couple photo ops, not nearly the number of like the backpacks and photo ops they had in the first one. And I'm like, that's kind of sad I, because I'm like, I wish I had more to go see the smaller details in the city because yeah. this this map and everything they've done is just fantastic. Uh, but... I, I would agree with you, and I also think that the the new types of missions are not as fun as well. Mm. Like, I text you when I was trying to do those stupid drone tailing yeah. missions. Like, yep, yep. ridiculously hard. Like, this is, like, similar... Um, this is similar annoyance to, like, people playing Superman 64 trying to fly through those dumbass rings. Yeah. Like, I had to replay those missions so many times, and I was relatively leveled up. Like, my my speed was there. It's just, like, yeah. the, the turning radius of those web wings are just atrocious, and there's so much punishment for getting something wrong. Like, if you make a turn wrong, and, like, you run into a tree or the corner of a building, like, you might as well scrap the whole mission, yeah. because you are not gonna get it to the end. So that drove me just absolutely yep. up the front. I- wall and also like i wasn't a big fan of the mysteriums either like i thought the story element of it was kind of so, interesting i but like i didn't really like the mysterium those are essentially the same as the um the taskmaster right well no no uh what's her name it was the, the the chick from the first one it was the one it was the that girl like the prankster or something like that i forget that everyone complained oh. about oh oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I so remember. so i get it like the, the little size i just don't think I don't like I don't like a you have to be miles to play them. OK, that, that locking you into one character to do that was not very fun, uh, but I didn't mind them. I had a good time three starting them. They, it was it was pretty easy stuff to update. I, I, I like the challenge of those. I really enjoyed the spider bot finding the spider bots, Mike. I thought those were cool because that was a spider verse tie in and you got to see the oh, different yeah. little spider bot designs. Yeah. Also, great payoff at the end, too. That yeah. almost felt like I was doing an Easter egg more than I was actually yeah accomplishing a mission yeah those i also enjoyed the prowler missions that were like more puzzle based as well uh i, I really guess i enjoyed finding the prowler stuff so uh, yeah, yeah those, those were fun there are good ones uh, but there were some that were not fun but i just don't think i, I went literally twice as much as this like I, I i felt like i wasn't i was done so quickly i'm like i was i want to do more like i want to visit the city i want to see more of the little stuff but it kept taking me to like building tops and like you know, um, things that I, I would not like I'm swinging high and yes, swinging is fun, but like, I want to see the details they added to the city because it's so fun. Like the amusement park, the amusement park portion of the game story was really fun. Cause you got to literally go play every little carnival game in there that you wanted to, right? There was like seven of them you could do and you got to ride the roller coaster in first person mode. thought that was really and, fun. And also there was a fun reveal at the end that like Harry has these superpowers, yeah. you know, he's here to help you know we he knows like peter's identity like they you know they you get to build all of that into like a fun unique Mm -hmm. uh place in the city yeah um other than that you know overall i i enjoyed the suits design the extra suits mike i know you didn't change a lot of those but i really enjoyed some of the suits you get to change the color of the suits even Um, some of the suits i liked some of the suits but i feel like if i had to compare quality wise to the previous games some of these suits i did i thought looked like trash <laughs> i feel like well i feel like the first game played it safe and like these are the variants that you know 
of, and these were like here's some little little more sub variants. Uh, I um I, I don't you I know you beat the game, but have you hundred percented all of the all of the stuff in the game yet? Uh n- no. Because there's a Miles. Uh, uh, he becomes like um he gets the a King Venom suit that felt like it was part maybe part of the campaign that was cut a little bit. Um, that is really cool when you defeat all the symbiote hives. That, that they they hide from. Oh, I think no, I have I, his Carnage one is really cool. He's got a like and he's, he's got a King Venom one too, which I think is really you're gonna really enjoy. Um, so I, I enjoyed the suits. You know, I think it's just again an improve. I wish they could carry over the suits from the first one. Like, hey, you played the first one, unlocked the suits. Here they are in this game, right? I think that would have been cool to 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 have those in here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the next thing for me is you know, the game's gonna continue. Uh, this this world's gonna continue. Obviously, they're setting up. Um, uh, uh, Norman as a Green Goblin. They talk about the G serum. Harry Osborn is dead, but he's not. He's not dead, but he's like brain dead. Maybe it looks uh-huh. like. So I uh, some like some people are speculating maybe a superior Spider-Man storyline with with Doc maybe, Ock. But they, I I feel like that's reaching a little bit. Yeah, I don't think so. But but Doc Ock shows like hey, he's writing his final chapter. So it sounds like they're setting themselves up for a pretty interesting third arc, which involves a Green Goblin and maybe a reformed. Uh, Dr. Octavius, if, if he needs to take down Norman, I don't know. But um, I, I feel, yeah, it was fine. I, I, I had a really good time. I, it's a really great game. I just want to play more because it was so good, Mike. Is, is yeah, that how I want to be? They just, they just do a great job in general of like a sequel where you just up the ante in every way, right? You have yeah. multiple heroes. You know, you have a, a bigger baddie than just Doc Ock with arms. You have like, like a, ve- like, I was it was crazy that the symbiote was taking over the entire city. I thought that yeah. was really crazy. I wasn't expecting to see the city transformed at the end there of like swinging through and then all of you have to watch out for all of these like tendrils Ten. and like mm-hmm. just venom symbiotes like slinging stuff at you like taking half of your health away because yeah. uh they got like they, they throw they're like snipers uh, man they're like the they're on the Yankees or something. Yeah. Um I'm, that's my sports reference. Is that a good is that, is that is that's, that's, a good throw? I don't it's know. It's locally based to the city so that's all that yeah. really it's all that really matters but <laughs> I, yeah I, th- I thought the game like i was glad to be surprised throughout the game yeah. like venom popping out those venom wings oh super yeah rad. i was like i gotta have that as a statue that's like so yeah. sick that's yeah. so cool the fact that you got to play as venom is really cool mm-hmm. not expected we've never really played as the as like you know the quote unquote the villain before yeah. so that was really well, really fun ult- ultimate spider-man did it uh you gotta play as Peter, um, Spider-Man, and Venom, but like that was also a highly reviewed game back in like 2007. So mm-hmm. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, yeah, uh, we 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 forgot to mention the the reveal of maybe it was Cletus Cassidy. It wasn't entirely. Oh, so, clear so there's the a whole yeah, there's a whole was. side thing where where there's a, a person trying to get a, a, as an arsonist, the the King of Fire or the the Lord of Fire, whatever they call him. He um, they bring back Yuri right as her wraith personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, what is cool about that is, you know, they, they lean into like, he's got a piece of the, the symbiote. So maybe a spinoff game, another like step will be, a, you know, or DLC would be a carnage DLC. Um, and then at the end, um, the post credit scene, you get to see Cindy Moon, which is Silk, the character Silk, Mike, which I was like, I want to talk to you about this because there's a show coming out called Silk Spider Society. <laughs> and they are literally teasing Cindy Moon in this, like the back, you don't see her face, you see the back of her. Um, cause her dad is dating miles mom. Yeah. Um, also so. they're, they're probably not entirely sure what they want to do with the, the character casting or the face yet, you know, yeah. so like, Oh, do we want to base it off like an, an actor or who are we going to get in here yeah. in this role? Yeah. So are we going to have like three total spire characters? Is this going to be like miles be- trying to teach somebody how to be, maybe she's already a hero and we don't even know it. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, if they I, follow I, the, the, the comic books, she, again, she was bit by the same Peter, the bit Peter, bit, same spider, the bit Peter, but she seems much younger in this than the other one so so yeah she, she seems be. to be closer maybe to miles is age yeah. so yeah i'm really curious to see what they do moving in the future yeah you brought up the idea are they going to kind of do another like 2.5 sequel where we mm-hmm. get a uh, a miles or maybe it's a cindy moon game is the yeah is the next one i would probably say the character I, I just think i maybe it's not a game maybe it's just dlc for this one because this world it's just so ripe for so much more and the first game had DLC, right? Spider Man One had the um, the uh, the Black Cat three three part DLC, the city that never sleeps, and they had added, mm-hmm. added more suits and abilities. So, 
I, I think it's prime. They just haven't announced anything yet, and that's kind of like, eh, hurry up. I want to I wanna know more. But this studio is also working on Wolverine and the Game Awards this week, so I, I, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a Wolverine trailer this week as and, well. And that's, that's what this – I think that's what this game kind of, I guess, franchise really needs right now. Like, I want to do, like, a substantial mission in a future game in Hell's Kitchen with Daredevil. I don't have to play as Daredevil, right? Mm. But I want him to be an integral part of the story. And they can even build it into the narrative, like, like oh, I've been gone for a while. There's been all this stuff happening. It seems to be all focusing around you. And then maybe he could kind of, like, you know, be kind of chastising it, Spider-Man a little bit for bringing all this trouble the, to the city. It needs, yeah, it needs to feel like the, the Spider-Man games of old, right? From, like, the 2000s, right? Uh, the N64 ones. Because there's an Avengers Tower in this game, and they don't do fucking anything with the Avengers. And that's really disappointing. Like, you have an Avengers Tower. Where are the Avengers in this world? Like, yeah. Like, just like, don't put the tower in if you're not going to do it. I don't care. Yeah, and, and I'm not expecting, like I said, like, I'm not expecting them to be, like, a super integral part of the story. I don't expect to take the reins of Iron Man and fly around the city at all. But, like, I think they should be they should be present in some when, aspect. I think that would be really, really fun. When the city is covered in symbiote goo and there's an Avengers Tower here, where are the defenses, at least for the Avengers Tower? Like, yeah, bring we, Peter we, into the Avengers <laughs> in the next game. I don't care. It, yeah, I feel like really the only excuse narratively in my head is since things are happening so quickly and we are such efficient heroes at saving the day uh, within the span of, like, you know, one evening, kind of when mm-hmm. the symbiote hits, right? Um, that like oh well you know if the all of the Avengers are off doing something else they they can't they've been they they've been off for years Mike I, <laughs> I they haven't been since the first I just think if yeah I agree with you they need to have more characters going forward other than just the Spider characters and yeah. they don't have to be playable they don't have to be huge parts but they at least need to be acknowledged and be there a little bit and maybe even bring Peter in as a Spider like he 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 may be a retired Spider Man but he's an Avenger now right so he has maybe money or like the ability to, like you're upgrading your suit of the Avengers Tower is like your home base for the next game i think it'd be mm-hmm. fantastic yeah but i would i would i would love that as well yeah over I, I i do not regret getting this game day one no, um, no, I, no 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 and and i it's think just, it's fun talking about it yeah and i think that why i my again my disappointment is there's not enough because i just had so much fun playing it and uh this is one of those games i know there's a new game plus setting coming i i platinum trophy this mike i don't platinum trophy any playstation game <laughs> except for spider-man miles and this so uh, Spider-Man 2. So I'm hoping they add, you know, the new game plus uh, soon and then maybe add a couple trophies for playing harder difficulties because when you go new game plus, you get all your ability points, right? And going in and doing that. And then just turn it down for Mary Jane missions because to hell with those. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to hopefully die back in. Um, it was just a really emotional story too. I, I know we've come back to that several times, but like, you know, having Peter, you know, the flashback to where you went to high school was, I think, a really solid choice in this game where you ride the bike back to the, the high school and you, you sneak showing how how good friends you were and like how <laughs> it was so hard. To, like you've got to like kill your friend at the end of this game kind of deal. So yeah. the, the the opposite of uh, something uh, deep and dark. I saw this uh, this fun glitch that you can do when you're uh when you're playing as venom uh you can kind of glitch out of the bounds of the mission and you can just kind of like run around the city and the only thing that you can really interact with is there's a there's a bicycle i (laughs) think in in astoria and uh this the character model is still like technically like rigged to it so you can be venom right around on this little bicycle it's hilarious because he doesn't quite fit to the dimension so he's like standing up very weird uh, i would recommend to go out and look that video up it's hilarious yeah I've, I've seen a lot of mods um for people like uh on piece the pc versions of some of these games i don't think for playstation 5 but like you know putting playing as j jonah jameson or something like that in these <laughs> games so it, it'd be it'd be interesting but yeah overall uh, if you if you don't have, have a if you have a playstation 5 this is great if you are holding out to get one because of a game this game really pushes the playstation 5 mike real fast the last thing i want to talk about this will be it and then we'll, we'll get shut up it's Fast travel. You wouldn't let me talk about fast travel last time because you're like, I want to experience myself. Mm-hmm. That is mind blowing how you can fast travel in this game. Like to the exact oh. it's like city street you were marked on instantaneously. Like yeah. in this game. And, it, and the single best part about it is, is they really, really nail the perspective transition. So like, cause when you just like fast travel, you pick a point on the map and then it kind of auto moves it to, 
drop it at a point where the game can actually smoothly position you in. But as the, the transition happens, you automatically know the perspective of where you are on the map because mm-hmm. you don't know if you're going to be heading north, south, east, or west when you come in on the screen. But the way it wipes and transitions, you just you automatically have your bearings because it kind of melds from the from the map to the and, aerial view of this. It's just it's so smooth and it's so great. And then your character comes in out of frame, does like a little barrel roll with the web mm-hmm. wings too. So like you're like it's like you're riding with the with the character. Right, like it's very, very smooth. So uh, mm. absolutely. So I'm glad you had a good time because that I was, I was like, oh, we hadn't talked about it yet, and I was like, I liked it. So I think you would like it, but I just want to double check that you were all. I loved it, Chris. Loved it. All right. Well, that's a that's a stunning recommendation for this game, uh, which is out now. All right, Mike. That's it for the show. I think this was a good time. This is a good show uh, today. Mm-hmm. If people want to know more about what you're up to, what you're doing, where can they find you at, my friend? Yeah, they can read my uh, webcomic at liferewardsrisk.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, where can they find you? You can catch up or mustard with me. Oh, got them uh, on Instagram, Valdan87, uh, V-A-L-D-A-N, or uh, Super, or not Super, but like Video Game Systems of the same name. But if people want to know about the show, what we're doing, what we're listening to, when we get the Aquaman review later this month, ooh, I know people <laughs> are waiting for it. Where can they oh, get boy. that at? Oh, head on over to Superhero Slate. Dot com. That is the Avengers headquarters in the city of mm-hmm. Spider-Man, where we are at SuperheroSlate.com. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to fine podcasts like our own. Uh, you can get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. We love hearing from you. Did you beat Spider-Man? I hope you beat Spider-Man or else we just spoiled the whole thing for you. Mm-hmm. Let me know what you think of it. We like to hear from you, and we love our super fans. So if you want to be a super fan of the show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend. Share the show with a buddy, and we will be here every week, folks. That's right. We'll see you next week. Bye.